Okay. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to uh, look at Prim's algorithm together with Network X. So um, both of these. <clears throat> so Prim's algorithm is an alg algorithm used to solve the minimum spanning tree problem, which was discussed in uh, the previous lecture. And Network X is a Python package that we're going to use to solve this problem. Okay. So. Uh, let's recall, so, um, so Prim's algorithm for the MST. Okay, so I'm going to just write down this algorithm again. So, um, so you initialize. some randomly chosen vertex. So we're going to say that V of T is equal to some little V and the edge set is going to be empty. Okay. And this is a V, little V. Okay. So then we're going to say while um, T is not spanning. We're going to say um, add a min cost edge to T so that T remains a tree. And then finally, we're going to say return T. All right, so this is uh, the pseudocode for Prem's algorithm. So, um, you know, I went over iterating through this algorithm in my previous YouTube lecture, but I might as well do it again. So let's uh, draw a weighted graph. Okay, so I'm just going to give the vertices labels. So zero, one, two three, four, and five. And okay. hopefully all of you can see that. Let me dim my light a little bit. Okay. All right. So then let me put some weights on these edges. I'm just kind of doing this arbitrarily. Maybe like one, 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 two, three, four, five, and two. Okay, so those are the, the weights on the edges here. And here, here this is a one. Okay, so um, how do we do this? Well, um, someone tell me to, so we need to initialize our tree. So let's initialize. So say T is equal to some vertex set. So in some edge set, so you can say V of T is equal to. So let's pick, uh, someone tell me a vertex to start at. Zero. Zero. Okay, so let's start at zero. And then our edge set is going to go into the empty. Okay, so um, how this is going to work is so here, there's our initial tree. Just that vertex right there, that's a tree. It, it's a connected graph. Well, actually, we should go back and look at what this means. So what does it mean that 
T is a tree, it means that T is connected with no cycles. Okay, so T is connected with no cycles. That's what it means to be a tree. Um, and then up here, while T is not spanning, what this means is that the vertex set of T does not equal the vertex set of the graph. Okay, so that's what that means there. So, all right, we initialize our tree. We have a vertex setting and edge set. So, together, these things right here, together, those make up a tree throughout the entirety of the algorithm. Okay, so um, that's our tree. It's a connected graph with no cycles, it's just that one vertex. That's fine. Now, is T spanning, like, are we in this while loop? Well, no, right? So currently, V of T does not equal the vertex set of the graph, right? The vertex set of our tree does not equal, so we're not spanning right now. So that means that we're in this while loop, okay? So, um, what do we do? We need to add a min cross edge to T so that T remains a tree. Okay. That's what we need to do. We're in that while loop. So, let me ask you so, can I add? So, if I look at all these edges here, right? And, and I see that there's an edge here, one, two, the cost one, right? Can I add? this edge. So can I do that? Is that a, a possible edge that satisfies this uh, condition in the while loop? No. no. No, right? Because what does this graph look like? If I did add that, it would look like this. Right? That edge and those vertices make up this graph. And that graph is not a tree. A tree. It's not a tree because they're, 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 they're not, it's not connected. It's not connected, right? Trees have to be connected. So we cannot add that edge. Even though it has a minute, it has cost one, which is low compared to everything else, we can't add that because when we do that, we don't have a tree. So we cannot add that edge. What are the only edges that are possible for us to add? Two or three. Remember that edges are pairs of vertices. Oh, right. Okay. So zero, or two, two, or zero, one. Right. The only possible edges that we can add are those two, right? You see that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Make my tree a little bit darker so you can see it better. Glad the semester is almost over. I don't know this is like my last good marker. Um, okay, so the only edges are 0, 2, 0, 1. Okay, now this is important when thinking about how to program this. What was the, what was it? So we have our, our current tree and we had to ask a question. What was the question that I was just asking? Which vertices can we connect to vertices zero? More generally, what, what, what were we asking? We were asking what are the conditions of a tree or what are the possible edges to add? So I'm going to start like maybe over here in like a little box. So, um, so first we had to initialize. Okay, and then we had to um, what answer the question, or maybe not what, we had to find 
the possible edges to add. Right? That was the next thing we, we did. Okay? So now that we know that we can add either 0, 1, or 0, 2, which one of those edges do we add according to what's in this while loop? 0, 1. Minimum cost of 0, 1. Right. Right. So now. That's the edge that we add, right? So what was the next thing we had to do, right? The next thing we had to do is um, maybe we can call this like E temp or something. Like let's give this a name. Um, yeah, I'm going to say E temp, T E M P. And that's what that says. You can probably barely read it, but that says E10. So that's the possible edges. And then we want to find the main cost edge in E10. The E10 is from the previous step. Okay. So that's like step two, right? Okay. okay, but now once we do that, what do we have to do to our tree? This is currently our tree right here. So now what we have to do is we have to say, okay, we need to update our, our vertex set to include that vertex number one. And now we have to update our edge set to have zero one. That's the edge now. So the next step in friends is going to be to update the tree. Um, uh, with um, I'll call it min e in e temp. So min e is from this previous bullet point here. Min e. Okay. Now um, we have to check the while loop. Are we spanning right now? No. Right, so I probably should have put it up here. We have to, the next part is to say, check the vertex set of the tree equal to the vertex set of the graph. And that's basically it, All right? So, okay, what are the possible edges now that we can add? Wouldn't it be, Equivalent because edge one, three, and one, two are both both one, so therefore. Oh, well, before we get to that, before we get to that, what are the possible? Look at the. So we we check that we're back in here. We're at this bullet point right here. Oh, well, one, three, and one, two. We have one, three, one, two, but also. Oh, well, zero, two. If we want to. Zero, two. One, two, one, three. Those are the possible edges to add. Among those, we pick one of minimum cost. Okay. It's not going to matter which one we pick. We can do this. Professor, can we choose two edges given that? No, we only pick one at a time. Okay. And you'll see why in a moment. So now we have to update our tree. Now we're, so we found these are the possible edges, and then we find the min edge in there. And then we update our tree. So we have edge zero, one, and we have edge one, three. Okay. We check if we're spanning. We're not. We add again. So now 
Where are, what are we supposed to do now? We're not standing set. What's the next thing that we do? Find the possible edges. In which, what, what are the possible edges? Uh, three, two, three, five, one, two, and uh, zero, two. Right. Zero, two, one, two, uh, three, two, uh, three, five. three, five, right? Among, so now that we found the possible ones, what do we have to do? We have to find the minimum. You see, if there's two of them, <clears throat> it won't matter which one we pick. I pick that one. Okay. So now we now that we've done that, we have to upgrade. So we added the edge two three. So we're gonna add vertex two, and then we're gonna add the edge two three. And then we check: Are we spanning? No. So what's the next possible thing? What's the next step of this algorithm? I find the find the edge. The possible edges, right? Now, what are the possible edges now? Uh, zero, two, one, two, two, four, and uh, three, five. Um, false. And this is why you can't um, have multiple edges at a time. So, can someone tell me why? We oh, because it's a you don't want to you don't want to cycle. That's why. Right. No cycles. At each step of the algorithm, no cycles. If we add this edge here, what do we get? Cycle. Cycle. If we add this edge here, we cycle. get a cycle. So the only possible edges we can add are here and there. Now, what do you notice about? This is a big part of the algorithm, is finding those possible edges. So if we have, like, suppose for a moment that we're building some tree. This is some tree that we're building, right? That's some, like, abstract tree that we're building. And suppose that we're looking at an edge where the two vertices are not, I'll, I'll do it in green. Suppose we're looking at an edge where there's two vertices where both of those vertices do not belong on the tree. <clears throat> Can we add that edge? To the tree. For example, Here's our tree. Here's an edge where both vertices are not on the tree. Can we add that edge? No. No. So it's not connected. Right, because then that would be bad, right? Like, if we add an edge where both vertices, both endpoints of the edge are not in our tree, then we have two pieces. That's not good. Can we add an edge where one endpoint is in the tree? So it yes. would be yes. three, five, two, four. Well, yeah, we can add that because it keeps it connected, but we, we're not going to loop around. Okay. Can we add an edge where both endpoints are in the tree? No, but it's a cycle. No, right? If both endpoints are in the tree and we add an edge, we form a cycle. So look here. Both endpoints are in the tree. So if we add that edge, we form a cycle. This edge here, both endpoints are in the tree. So if we add that edge, we form a cycle. So the possible edges, right, have a very clear criteria now. Edges are only consist of two vertices each, right? Two endpoints. So we should make note of that. And, and say something about possible edges. So um, the edge U W is possible 
Only when what? What's the criteria for the edge UW to be possible? In fact, this is like an if and only if statement. If and only if. When it doesn't form a loop. Well, in terms of what I was just saying, though, like, if, yeah, we don't want to form a cycle, but um, these when the vertices, what when, when the vertices don't repeat. Um, both vertices are in the tree. If both are in the tree, then we have that condition, right? Right. So then it wouldn't be possible. What about two four though? Two four, only only one. Oh, in the in the tree already. Okay. And here, both vertices are not. Right, like think back to the picture I just had. Okay, I see what you're saying. We have some tree, right? Right. If one is in there, then we can add that, that edge, right? Right. If both aren't, then we can't add that edge. Right. And if both if, are, then we can't. Then we can't. So there's only one possibility when exactly one of U and W is in the tree. So when exactly one of U or W is in the vertex set of the tree. That's the only possibility for adding an edge. So what this is giving us here is a, we can write a function to test this. We can write a function to test this and all the function, all, all the edges that pass that test are possible edges, right? Okay, so we're still not standing. So, and the only edges that have exactly one endpoint in the vertex set of the tree are two, four and three, five. Of those, the minimum cost one is two four. And then we update our tree. Okay. And then um, it's still not standing. And now the only edges that have exactly one endpoint in the tree are what? Four, five, and three, five. Of those, the minimum cost edge is four, five. And then we update and we're done. Why are we done? Because now the vertex set of our tree equals the vertex set of the graph, meaning we're spanning. We exit and we return our tree. This is our tree right here. Okay, so um, is that clear? Yeah. Professor? Yeah. Can you, can you do an example where uh, instead of going from edge one, three, you go one, two? Yeah, it, it would have been like this. It just, you would have never picked that edge. You just would have picked this one. And notice that these trees have the same cost, right? Two plus one is three, right? Four, eight, nine, ten. That this tree has total cost ten. The total, the sum of all the costs on the edges. And if we look at the tree we just had, that has cost ten as well. Two plus one is three. Plus one is four. Eight, nine, ten. Prim's algorithm is a what's called a greedy algorithm. And it's one of the few cases where a greedy algorithm is guaranteed to give you the optimal solution. So Prim's will always terminate with a tree that has minimum cost among all possible trees. Okay, okay. thank you, sir. So 
Um, some of you might be wondering how we're going to like store a graph in a computer. Well, there's several ways to do this. Um, the way that we're going to use is, is common and um, uses an edge list. So I'm going to go ahead and, and write down the edge. So we're going to save this on a, in our computer as um, G. Um, I'll call it G1 dot txt. So this is going to be a text file. Okay. And then we're going to store this graph like this, where there's white spaces between the numbers. Can someone guess what, how this is equivalent to this? Is, isn't this just the, uh, the, the first column is, the first two columns are the vertices and the third column is the edge length? The cost, yeah, the edge weight. The, 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 the edge weight. Yeah, so, so what this is saying is vertex zero is adjacent to vertex one with weight two. Zero and one are adjacent with weight two. Zero and two are adjacent with weight three. One and two are adjacent with weight one. One and three are adjacent with weight one. Two and three are adjacent with weight one. Two and four are adjacent with weight four. Three and five are adjacent with weight five. Four and five are adjacent with weight two. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So <clears throat> because graphs are just relational pictures, right, that come from sets. Literally all the information <clears throat> stored in this picture is stored in this list. So if we have access to this list, we have access to the graph. They are the same, okay? So um, be sure to write that down because we're gonna, we're gonna work with that um, using Python here in a second. So take a few seconds to do that. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and get uh, Anaconda and Spider opened while you're writing that list down. Okay, so share my screen now. Um, hold on. Okay, 
Hold on, I got Okay. Okay, so let me, um, I have to restart Zoom in order to share my screen. Again, I have a new computer right now. Um, so I'm going to exit out of this meeting and it's gonna save and it's gonna be titled uh, Prims Day 2. And then I'm gonna open up, I'm gonna click right back into our Zoom meeting as soon as I close out. So everyone, um, I'm about to exit and I'm gonna reopen uh, Zoom after I restart it, okay? So I'm exiting now. 